This is a tutorial on square root functions. A square root function is just a function that has its variable underneath a square root sign. So here we have y is equal to the square root of x. This is our basic square root function. It's y is equal to x, except our x is underneath the square root. Now to get more complicated than this, here we have y is equal to the square root of 2x plus 5. Now the x is multiplied by 2 and having 5 added to it, but this is still a square root function because it's underneath a square root sign. Let's look at our last example here. Here we have y is equal to the square root of 7 times x. This is not a square root function. This is y is equal to the square root of 7 times x. The x is not underneath the square root sign. This function has a square root sign, but only the 7 is underneath it. And the square root of 7 is approximately 2.65. So really this is y is equal to 2.65 times x. So since our x is not underneath the square root, this is not a square root function. So now let's talk about evaluating square root functions. This is just plugging in numbers for our variable and seeing what the function is equal to. So here we have y is equal to 2 times the square root of x minus 3. And we want to evaluate this for when x is equal to 12. Well, to do this, we do this the same way we would do any other function. We just plug in 12 for x. This looks like y is equal to 2 times the square root of 12 minus 3. Now 12 minus 3 is 9, so this is y is equal to 2 times the square root of 9. The square root of 9 is 3. 9 is a perfect square of 3, so this is y is equal to 2 times 3. And 2 times 3 is just 6, so our y is equal to 6 when x is equal to 12. Let's try our next example here. We have f of x, or a function of x, is equal to the square root of 2x minus 4. We want to find our function value when x is equal to 8. So all we're going to do is plug in 8 here for x. Our f of 8 is equal to the square root of 2 times now our x is 8 and we're still subtracting 4. 2 times 8 is 16, still subtracting 4. 16 minus 4 is 12, so we end up with the square root of 12. So our answer is the square root of 12, except the square root of 12 is not our most simplified answer. 12 is not a perfect square, but you could break this up into the square root of 4 times 3. 4 is a perfect square. So if I break that up into the square root of 4 times the square root of 3, and the square root of 4 is just 2, our answer is 2 square roots of 3. Now if you couldn't see that 4 was a perfect square and it was part of 12, you can also simplify the square root of 12 by using prime factorization. 12 can be factored into 2 and 6. 2 is a prime factor. 6 I can factor into 2 times 3. So that means 12 is equal to 2 times 2 times 3. And if you have two twos or 2 of any number, you can rewrite this 12 as 2 squared times 3. And if we're taking the square root of 12, that means we're taking the square root of 2 squared times 3, which you could also write as the square root of 2 squared times the square root of 3. The square root of 2 squared is just 2, so we end up again with 2 square roots of 3. Well, now that we know how to evaluate square root functions, let's talk about the domain of square root functions. The domain is just what values of x, say, that we can plug in for x that will give us an answer or will give us a y value. Now you may remember that you cannot take the square root of a negative number. Square root 
of negative 16 doesn't make any sense because there's no number I can multiply by itself and get a negative number. So if I have a function then that has a square root in it and my variable is underneath that square root, that means there's no value of x that I can plug in that will give us a negative number underneath that square root. Basically everything under the square root has to be positive or zero. So that means in this example y is equal to the square root of x that x has to be positive or zero. Or you can say that x has to be greater than or equal to zero. If I plug in any negative numbers for x into this function, then I'll end up with y is equal to the square root of a negative number, which again doesn't make any sense. So my domain of y is equal to the square root of x then is that x has to be greater than or equal to zero. Let's look at our second example here. We have y is equal to the square root of 7x minus 35. Now, I can't take the square root of a negative number, which means everything underneath this square root sign has to be zero or positive. That doesn't necessarily mean that x, though, has to be greater than or equal to zero. It just means that everything underneath this radical has to be greater than or equal to zero. But my domain is values of x. It's not values of what's underneath the radical. So if what's underneath the radical has to be greater than or equal to zero, then let's just set 7x minus 35 having to be greater than or equal to 0. This I can solve for x. I just add 35 to both sides. I get 7x has to be greater than or equal to 35. Divide both sides by 7 and I say x has to be greater than or equal to 5. So my domain then is that x has to be greater than or equal to 5. If I plug in 4, then I'll end up with a negative number underneath my square root sign. So when you want to find the domain of a square root function, you just take everything that's underneath the square root sign and set it greater than or equal to 0.